Hello, and welcome to the first in a series detailing what we can learn from playing Destiny. If more than 10 people find and watch this, that is. Anyway, my name is Matt, and that's a super boring name. So I'll go by the name of my character in Destiny, Tristan, or Tris for short, whichever you prefer, I guess. And I am recording this from my state-of-the-art recording studio, which is my closet. And as the title says, this is a series about addiction, recovery, and what I have learned in my years of playing Destiny. Now before we get started, I just want to make clear that I am not a psychologist or a drug and alcohol counselor or anyone beyond a junior college education, really. What I am, however, is someone who has lived an awful lot of life and has experience with addiction, recovery, and of course, playing Destiny. I grew up in a loving middle to upper middle class family. I went to private school, I was a boy scout, and I joined the military. Now gaming has been a part of my life since the NES. I have fond memories of Duck Hunt and Star Island, Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo, Alex Kidd in Wonderland on the Sega, pretty much all of the Final Fantasy series. Anyway, you get the idea. And gaming has taught me a lot. It's taught me determination, patience, perseverance. It's helped me with problem solving. But honestly, I never thought it would teach me anything about recovery or how to handle addiction. Now, it's important to know that addiction doesn't care if you have an amazing background or a troubled one. Once that door opens, it is very, very difficult to close. My road to addiction was paved with a visit to the doctor, as were many others, I'm sure. What occurred was a progression from prescription to desperation. And it culminated in a decade of my life at its absolute most miserable. Those days were filled with shame and regret, a seemingly unending cycle of having to use and feeling the shame of using, then using again to stifle those feelings of shame, and a cycle that just went on and on and on. I would have to plan my day around either having or finding opiates to function, to go to work, to function day to day, and most importantly, to not go into withdrawal. For me, withdrawal was the single scariest thing. Not overdosing, not the consequences of my choices, not jail or the loss of my family or self-respect. It was withdrawal, and I would do just about anything to avoid it. Now, I'm gonna preface all of this by saying that this is my personal experience, and I'm sure others have had a different experience, but for me, I needed to avoid withdrawal at all costs. And for those of you who don't know what it's like, well, Try to imagine having the worst flu of your life. Now mix in food poisoning, insomnia, muscle cramping, restless everything, hot and cold sweats, and just a dash of wishing that you were dead. Now imagine feeling like that for a week. Then after that, you have the cravings. This little voice telling you every second that you should use, that it's okay now, that just a little isn't gonna hurt you. And no matter what you do or think, it never goes away. The cravings are a non-stop drive to make yet another poor choice, and it was the worst. Now, I was lucky. I still had people in my life who cared enough about me that when I hit my rock bottom, they offered me help, and thank God I took it. I was able to go into an amazing treatment program. I did the work and fought the fight, and a year later, I graduated and I started to live life again, sober and full of hope. Now, up until going into that program, I was playing D1 on the daily, and when I went into the program, I obviously couldn't, and I looked forward to playing again the whole time I was in treatment. I know how silly it sounds, sitting around in rehab, worrying about something like a video game, but this game was something that I really, really enjoyed, and I was unwilling to let my addiction take anything else away from me. In D1, I was part of a great clan, and we would regularly play together, we would do the raids, nightfalls, the exotic sword quests, touch of malice, rip hadium flakes. But every break we took, I would run to the kitchen, I would use, and then I would come back ready for more hadium flake farming goodness. I had ended up in a place where I was unemployed, low on cash, and had completely isolated myself. My brilliant plan was that I could break into the YouTube circuit and fund my life with ad revenue and could basically play Destiny for a living. I tried starting a D1 channel in 2017, focusing on helping people solo the Nightfall and Prison of Elders. The idea was that I could show other average players that they could do endgame content that was difficult without having to be a player like uh, Datto or Esoteric. But the videos didn't really take off and 
I was too busy trying to keep up my opiate habits to do what was really needed to be a success. So as much as I enjoy playing Destiny, the idea of sitting down with Destiny 2 and being sober was daunting. Addiction had taken so much from me I didn't want to give up something that I enjoyed so much. One of the things you learn about in recovery is avoiding places, things, and people that you knew and did while you were using. The idea there is to try to avoid triggers that could end up in a relapse. So while the idea of returning to Destiny was a positive one, I was also concerned it could end badly. Since my playing was so closely tied with using, it was a huge concern for me. So I made the decision that this addiction wouldn't take anything else from me. I knew I had to be careful so as to not replace one addiction for another, and I needed to be careful to not let it consume my life to isolate me and to end up in a place where I could justify using again. So I set boundaries, time limits, accountability with other people in my recovery group. I overcame my trepidation and reclaimed the universe of destiny. As addicts, we tend to feel powerless while in our addiction, and the drugs take up so much of our lives that we forget that we are the ones with the power, not the drugs. Now. As you can see in the gameplay, and I stated earlier, I am a fairly average player. In D1, I was part of an amazing active clan, like I said, and I'm still working on Thorn, Recluse, Mountaintop, the Shattered Throne, I haven't done the raids, and all of that's okay. I'm not part of a clan like I was in D1, and one of the things I've learned is that I don't need to be a god-tier player to put out a video and be helpful. At least, I hope I don't need to be. I may not be great at PvP, and I may not have the most electrifying PvE footage, but it may not be as amazing to watch as a Datto or Esoteric or Slayer Age, but it's what I got. So what's the lesson we can take away from all this? Well, regardless of what you may be struggling with, some sort of addiction, anger, self-harm, whatever it may be, there is hope. Your life can be better, and you can overcome. You can get into a better place. The only thing your particular challenge can take from you is what you let it. Just like in Destiny or whatever game you may be playing, there are challenges and quests that seem daunting, but as you play and learn the game, you can overcome those challenges. It takes a lot of work, and you will have setbacks. It will challenge and it will change you for the better, but you can do it. Whatever your struggle, it doesn't have to take anything else away from you. And whatever it is that you may be struggling with, don't be afraid to reach out for help, to seek guidance when you need it, and take back that power and reclaim your life in a positive way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, those very, very few who found it. I think I'm supposed to ask for likes and subscriptions and to hit the bell or something, but honestly, I just hope that you guys enjoyed watching. I look forward to making more of these. and. If there's a topic you want to see covered, please let me know in the comments. If you have questions or just want some encouragement, also let me know as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching my uninspired and average gameplay, and hopefully I'll do another one in about a week. I guess I'm done, and I'm leaving now. This is the end, I guess. Okay, bye.